we did uh, we had done the first uh, clinical trial on this topic. Um, it was 42 patients with venous stenosis, normal uh, neuroophthalmological exam. Patients had a spinal tap if uh, if there was a history of headaches to confirm that the intracranial pressure was normal. Obviously, if it was not normal, they would not belong into this group. Um, and uh, we documented a gradient of at least four millimeters of mercury across the stenosis. And in these 42 patients, again, this was a prospective uh, study, uh, and uh, which we did right before COVID, uh, actually. And we have shown that there is resolution or near resolution of passatile tinnitus in 98% of patients. The one patient who did not have improvement, she had a second source of the passatile tinnitus, which was a jugular bulb diverticulum, which I treated then and, and you know, at the, at the second time. But the summary is that this treatment uh, is exceptionally effective for carefully selected patients with debilitating passatile tinnitus, which opened up, you know, a completely new indication for, for this uh, for this procedure. I have a question for the from the audience at all about passatile tinnitus. Mm -hmm. The question is if someone has 70% venous sinus stenosis uh, and a manageable passatile tinnitus, uh, do you stand? I think that's a good question, and I hear this very often. Um, and I think patients who, you know, I, I have these monthly webinars for patients, and I, I say this a lot, venous sinus stenosis by itself is not an indication for stenting. Without, the, without debilitating symptoms or without significant symptoms of IIH, there is no need to have stenting because venous stenosis exists on an MRI scan. If the passatile tinnitus is manageable, you can continue observation and intervention later if passatile tinnitus worsens. There are patients who have manageable or mild passatile tinnitus for years, and then it gets worse. And I, I saw many of patients like that today. There are patients, I think that's a little less common, uh, but we see that also patients who have passatile tinnitus for many years without headaches, without um, without uh, papilledema or visual complaints, who develop eventually symptoms of high intracranial pressure. So there is a, a chance that things will progress. There is a chance that patients with passatile tinnitus may experience worse passatile tinnitus over time, or patients with passatile tinnitus may experience the full spectrum of symptoms of high intracranial pressure eventually, but it's difficult to know what the likelihood of that uh, uh, progression is. And these patients need to be monitored and intervened upon if, if uh, it, it becomes necessary. But having 70 or 80 or 60% stenosis on MRV does not necessitate stenting. I would also say that um, I think we're very um, limited in, in cross-sectional imaging and even with, with, with uh, traditional geography to assess the degree of stenosis of, in venous sinuses. We, it, this is, these are not cylinders like the arterial system. Um, these are irregular shaped uh, veins or, or blood vessels. Um, we're using intravascular ultrasound a lot uh, these days, and we're comparing the degree of stenosis on intravascular ultrasound versus traditional geography versus MRI, and the results are very different. So what looks at 70% on an MRV or a CTV or an angiogram is not necessarily that accurate. That's why these decisions should not be based only on degree of stenosis or even the presence of stenosis, they should be factored in with the patient's symptoms. But if you have a gradient, then that's a criteria to say that the stenosis, I mean, that the sinus is not normal, that the stenosis has, there is something wrong with it, no? That's correct. Um, and, um, but again, let's say a patient has mild passatile tinnitus. 
I would not even do angiogram on these patients. I mean, if you don't need to do, you need to do a procedure, you don't need to measure gradient if the symptoms are, are very mild and manageable because that's not gonna change the way I, I will approach this patient. I will still monitor this patient and I will do the, all these measurements at the time of, of, uh, of treatment uh, or to, to confirm whether treatment is necessary, let's put it this way. But um, I would not base this, the need for treatment, I guess what I'm trying to say, I will not base the need, the need for treatment based on the presence or the degree of stenosis alone. And I, I think this is, um, I see that a lot uh, these days, and I think it's, it's uh, not the best practice.